Welcome back to another mall. This is Keith and today on Dying Retail we are visiting Chesterfield Town Center in Richmond, Virginia. I filmed this mall the same day I filmed the Stony Point Fashion Park and I was expecting to find a mall that was not doing well. I was surprised to find otherwise. I found a parking lot full of cars, a food court full of people and dining options, and most of the mall full of people going to various stores. This mall features five anchor locations, at home, JC Penney, Macy's, a combination TJ Maxx slash home goods, and the fifth spot is the former location of Sears. I was wrong in my thoughts and what I would find. I was expecting to find a mall being clobbered by Short Pump Town Center and people not visiting because of a violent fight and murder in the food court a few years earlier. What did suck was I left Stony Point where I was freezing to this mall where I was burning up in my coat. However, I had started recording and I was just going to trudge on through and be miserable while I got all the footage I could acquire. Chesterfield Town Center opened August 28, 1975 as Chesterfield Mall. The mall developer was Southeastern Associates, which had developed malls in Danville and South Boston, Virginia. The only anchor store at opening was a 100,000 square foot Miller and Rhodes department store, and they were spending a ton of money advertising all this store would offer the public. From all the newspaper ads I came across from doing research, it did, after all, have 80 departments. Costing $10 million, the owners were stressing the natural look in its architecture and high quality merchandising. Among other things, the natural look meant brick pavement in the main corridors instead of standard terrazzo floors, for example. In its initial years, traffic was sluggish. So much, this led to the nickname Chesterfield Morgue.
1987, the mall went through an extensive renovation and it was renamed Chesterfield Town Center. The grand opening featured balloons, clowns, high-tech lasers, and modeling mannequins who moved robotically to the beat of Herb Albert's Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. This was to play into the new name and their diamond and palm tree theme. The mall was transformed to something open and airy with palm and ficus trees, pyramid-shaped skylights and pastel hues. The expansion was a departure from the earth-toned Chesterfield Mall and the owners hoped this $100 million renovation would attract upscale fashion conscious shoppers from the affluent Midlothian and Bon Air areas. They also envisioned this as a transition from a floundering shopping center to the region's largest mall when additional phases were completed. Phase one doubled the center's space to 600,000 square feet, and it increased merchant spaces from 35 to nearly 100. Phase two would feature the area's first Leggett's department store. This would increase the size of the mall to 800,000 square feet. An additional phase later in the year would increase the size of the mall to just under 1 million square feet. The one thing that surprised me was I thought you would have seen more uh, security walking the mall. However, um, there was one security person that I saw and they stood in the sunglass hut store the whole time that I was visiting. And then in this hallway area here, one passed me and uh, that was it. So I guess the rest were sitting in their little room watching video monitors.
as clean as this mall is and well lit and full of consumer activity, it's a bland mall in my opinion. After seeing what a Tubman mall has to offer, I was disappointed, especially when you drive up to this mall and you see the character on the outside. I thought you would have had more of this translate to the inside as well. And I know some of you are going to be disappointed that this isn't a dead mall. However, I decided to share this anyway because maybe it gives us hope and shows not all malls are struggling. We are going to have malls that survive what's currently happening across the country. Anywho, Back to the story of the renovation. Owners said the smaller sized mall was used more as a community space and could not compete to be a regional center. The larger size property would benefit from the growth of Chesterfield County. And local patrons were excited with the new offerings. Most stated that there was nothing in the old center and they would have to go to the now defunct Cloverleaf Mall instead. These changes probably helped hasten the demise of Cloverleaf. I mean, it pulled JC Penney's away and they were an original anchor of the Cloverleaf Mall. And I stand by my assessment. This is a bland mall. This, whatever it is in the center, was the only thing that stood out, in my mind anyway. In addition to the mall getting the new Leggett's, they also added Hess's as an anchor store, as well as a food court with 14 eateries, and they added a nine screen movie theater. In 1993, Hess's was sold to Profits, and then three years later, the store was sold to Dillard's. In 1994, Maserich Partnership acquired the center and they are based out of uh, California. And uh, in 1997, Sears opened and was followed by JC Penney's opening in 2001. And this was as a wave of retailers started to abandon Cloverleaf Mall. The Leggett store was traded to Dillard's who made it a second store location. Hex also joined the mall, and this made Chesterfield Town Center the largest mall in Richmond. In 2006, Hex was rebranded to Macy's, which was happening in all Macy's stores. Um, May of 2008, both the Dillard stores were closed. The space vacated by the movie theater was transformed into Barnes & Noble in June of 2008. The food court was also reworked to show off the bookstore and a new red 
Robin. In 2010, the Leggett's Belk Dillard's location became Garden Ridge, and the former Hess's Dillard's location became a combination TJ Maxx and Home Goods in 2011. Also in 2011, a series of store renovations started that included American Eagle Outfitters, Old Navy, and a new Rue 21 store. In December 2013, Masaryk sold the mall to Rouse Properties. Masaryk purchased the property in 1994 for $84 million from a partnership that was controlled by Philadelphia developer Kevin F. Donahue, former principal owner of the defunct Miller & Rhodes department store chain. Rouse also acquired the center at Salisbury on Maryland's eastern shore in the deal. Predictions were being made that Chesterfield Town Center was going to be killed by new competitors that opened in 2003. That would be Stony Point Fashion Park and Short Pump Town Center. However, 10 years after these doom and gloom predictions, they have beaten the odds and are holding their own. It's reported that 2013 sales were only down 3% from the levels in 2003. In 2015, H&M took over the location of Coldwater Creek and the Garden Ridge changed its name to At Home. November 7th of 2019, Sears announced it would be closing this location as part of their plan to close 96 stores nationwide and they closed in February of 2020. Candace, Crime Insider sources tell me at least four or five shots rang out inside the food court at Chesterfield Town Center, followed by shoppers running and a man down with at least one gunshot wound to his backside. About 6.09 uh, p.m. this afternoon, uh, police received a call. Um, for a fight that was in the food court area of the Chesterfield Town Center. Uh, somehow during the fight, uh, gunfire uh, erupted um, that resulted in uh, one victim uh, that was transported to the hospital with life-threatening injuries. Fortuitous for us that we've actually uh, had many active shooter exercises here at Chesterfield Town Center over the years, so officers that were responding to the scene had a really good idea of what to do when they actually arrived on scene. Sky 6 drone view shows just how massive the response was. Investigators working into the night to find out exactly what triggered the violence. It wasn't where, you know, somebody had gone in, you know, just, just randomly. I think it was between two people. In June of 2020, a fight broke out in the food court between two individuals, and apparently it had something to do with face masks. Unfortunately, the person that was shot after fists started flying, 22-year-old Kamani O'Donovan died several weeks later after his wounds. Police arrested William Ezell Taylor of Petersburg and was charged with aggravated malicious wounding and the use of a firearm in the commission of a felony. 
He was found guilty and is now serving 20 years in prison. All of this over a stupid face mask. I hope he has many years to think about that. Thank you for taking this tour with me of Chesterfield Town Center. And thank you to all of my subscribers. I'm doing my best to bring you the best content that I can possibly produce. And it means a lot to me that you take time to view these with me. It is a shame that the interior did not have the same character as the outside of the mall but it is good to see a location that is doing well and not becoming another national statistic. Take care, stay safe, and I can't wait to share the next mall video with you. This one is getting ready to be demolished. <laughs>